So I promised two kinds of transformation, right? I promised one starting with T, the other one starts with D. Now this is a bit of a funny, interesting word. It's actually been introduced in the new syllabus. Um, and so I'm going to use it and I'm gonna give you some synonyms for it. Um, that word is dilation. So when we think about um, translation, we're thinking about the graph staying exactly the same size, but then shuffling around in different places. The scale remains unchanged. But when we think about dilation, I don't know how many of you um, have had to go to uh, like an ophthalmologist or an orthoptist and had your eyes dilated, right? When you go into a dark room, of course, your pupils get bigger so you can see better and you can absorb more light. That's the same idea here, right? We're thinking about changing the scale of the graph. They're getting bigger and smaller. And just like with translation, we're gonna think about it first horizontally and then vertically, okay? So have a look at this guy. Now, what I've got provided for you here is um, a big set of axes. We're gonna draw in here in a second. But just like with our translation, we're gonna explore this with technology first. So I'm showing you these two equations so that you can take the time to put them into Desmos as I've written them here. Y equals X minus one, all squared. It's a parabola and it's been moved over one unit to the right or excuse me, the axes have moved one unit to the left. And then you've got this other one over here, y equals x on a minus one, all the rest, okay? So let's take a moment to put this into Desmos together. We made this big so you can see it there. I'm gonna move this a back to one because that's where it defaulted. And let's put some brackets in here so that we can adjust things as necessary. Minus one. And then I'm gonna adjust this guy over here on the left hand, right hand side. Okay, so in my bracket, divided by A, and then I've got minus one. Okay, so um, I'm going to get rid of my uh, working over here on the left now because you can see the equations of the graphs just in my Desmos window, so I hope they're clear up there in the top left. Now what are we looking at at this exact moment? Well, if your screen looks identical to mine with the same value of a, the default where it starts, a equals one, then my red graph and my blue graph are exactly the same graph. Do you see that? Because I've got x divided by one, x on one, so that's just x, right? So I've got x minus one squared, and then I've got x minus one squared again, okay? Now I want you to think about what's gonna happen when we change this value of a. Where are things going to move? Now, I'm just gonna put one value in there and then we're gonna start drawing all over this thing, okay? If I say move A onto two, hmm, what difference have we got here? Now, I kind of, I slightly gave away the game by telling you what this thing was called, um, but I hope you still have some thinking to do here, right? There's a dilation, a change. I like to actually use the word stretch because um, you can, in fact, when you go back, put A back to one and then literally watch the graph as you change from one all the way up to two. You can see you're kind of stretching it out like a piece of toffee, right? Um, it's now much wider than what I started with. So what, what way can I explain what's actually happening here? Well, not everything has changed, right? Some things have actually remained the same. The red and the blue graph share a couple of points that are actually identical. And the one that I'm most interested in, I'm going to uh, take a screenshot so I can draw on it. The one I'm most interested in, the one that actually hasn't gone anywhere is, have I got a suitable color here? Let's try, um, let's try green. Um, it's this point right in here. Wow, that's really thin. Let's try something a bit bigger. Ooh, that's really thin. How do I make this thicker? Mm, I'm just gonna leave it. Um, let's undo that one. I don't need that squiggle. Okay, now you can see in here, right? This x-intercept, think about this carefully. Uh, sorry, not x-intercept, this y-intercept hasn't gone anywhere. The y-intercept has remained unchanged. And what I'd like you to do is on Desmos, go ahead, change A to any value you like. And as you see this thing stretching and squashing, you'll see this y-intercept stays put, doesn't go anywhere, okay? But every other value on the graph moves um, or it stretches out, it dilates, right? Um, let's have a look at some of these spots in particular. Maybe I'll change it to black, that might be more useful, okay? Uh, let's have a look at the x-intercept, for example. The x-intercept used to be at one. Um, there it is, right in there. Oh, I'm using a pencil, that's weird. That's why I didn't want that. Uh, let's try something like this. Okay, there's x equals one, right there. And where has the new x-intercept appeared? Well, it's stretched all the way over to two. There it is, right? Now, have a think about that for a second. The x-intercept was one, and now it's shifted over, sorry, shifted, I should say stretched. It's stretched all the way over to two. 
Well, there's one value. Pick another one. Let's have a look. Um, for example, on my graph, uh, whoopsie daisy, I want to zoom out all the way. On my graph, one of the other spots that happens to land on some whole numbers um, is here at x equals 2 on my original graph um, and y equals 1. That's 2 comma 1 over there. Okay. Now this point here, it, it is also stretched, right? It's stretched over all the way to this spot over here. Where is it? Well, again, you can see it on the coordinate axes, right? Here, it's at 4 comma 1. One. So what am I doing here? I'm comparing the same y value, I'm looking across there, but I noticed that my x values have all doubled. Do you see that? I mean, it works for everything, even the ones that aren't on like a nice neat spot. Let's have a look at something like, say, um, this spot here, right? What is that um, in horizontal terms? Well, that looks to me like it's around x equals, uh, I'm going to call that 1.78 or something like that, right? Well, where has that gone to? Where is its equivalent point that moved, uh, that stretched over to the right-hand side? Well, it's gone all the way over here, right? In fact, I'm just gonna draw a straight line all the way through it. Uh, where'd my undo go? There it is. It's just gonna go all the way over there to the right-hand side and predictably, that value has doubled. It's, it's looking like it's around x equals 3.5, whatever, right? And you can do this for every single point. It goes over to the, uh, it goes over to the negative side as well. Um, if you pick a spot like this, um, it's gone twice as far horizontally stretched out, but this time it's in the negative direction because your original value was also negative. Okay, so, so what are we seeing here, right? I'm gonna say, uh, done, let's get rid of this, okay? What I'm getting is, if I have, and now I'm ready to, if you've been just playing around in Desmos like I have, it's come, time to come back to your piece of paper so we can draw this together. If I have a graph like this parabola here, and I'll call this my original, y equals x minus one or squared. Then my new graph, and let's, uh, let's choose a different color for it. So let's call this guy green. My new graph is going to look just like this, but it has been dilated or stretched horizontally and just like we saw with translation we should have expected that it was a horizontal change because look at where this a which is the thing that we're using to change look at where it's attached it's attached to the x value which is about horizontal change okay so therefore i'm going to do my best to draw a new fatter version of the graph like so so you can see this has been stretched out um, i'm going to fix that up because i've missed my uh, my y-intercept there that's better. So this is the one and only spot, the y-intercept there, which doesn't move anywhere because it's right there in the middle. So when you stretch it out, A, it stays where it is. But everything else, you know, and we move from x equals 1 uh, to x equals, whoops, I went too far, to x equals 2 when we were having a look at our x-intercept, right? And any other point you can take, it, it stretches and dilates in that dimension, okay? Let me pause there. I'm kind of sick to death of my own voice and I want you to have a think about this yourself. If this is what dilation looks like when I attach this uh, division or, or multiplication to the x value, well, what would you expect when you attach the, uh, the division or multiplication of a to the y value? This is a whole different set of graphs now. I invite you to go into Desmos, draw these two, and then have a look at, or graph these two on the, on the software, and then have a think about drawing them and how you would explain what's happening differently. How would you articulate the kind of dilation that's happening there, okay? I know graphs take time, and I want you to take the time to explore it a bit on Desmos. So I'm looking at the time now, I've got 10, 12. So I'm gonna give you three minutes to have a bit of a play, um, and you're welcome as well. Like we're looking at a parabola, because we're familiar with parabolas. But you're welcome to put in some other kind of function too, like a cubic or something more exotic. Have a fiddle, and then we'll come back um, in a few minutes to look at the results together, okay? And you're welcome to ask questions in the chat if you have any. Okay, so Abby, you've asked the question, what does the equation look like with y as the subject? Um, this is an interesting exercise that I'd love you to have a fiddle with, right? If we want y as the subject, I can do this for both equations, right? For this guy here, y plus 1 equals x squared um, is a pretty simple operation. I can do to both sides. So I, you've probably already worked that out. That's why you're asking about the green one. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. If I do that over here, what's, what's that going to look like? Well, if I take this green thing here, uh, I'll start off in the same way. Just get some space up here. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So, uh, sorry, I subtract 1, I should say. y on a equals x squared minus 1. And then I 
Think about what you want to do. Make A the subject. I'm going to multiply both sides by A. So that gives me A outside of X squared minus, sorry, 1. I'm just expanding and factorizing at the same time in my brain. So this is what it would look like with uh, Y as a subject. But I hope it becomes clear to you that this, if I write it with Y as a subject, it doesn't make it as clear that the A, this is the way I think about it, it's really acting on Y, it's not acting on X, even though it's written there on the right hand side, what's it really fiddling with? If you've had a go at Desmos, you'll see it's not about a horizontal change so much as it's about a vertical change. Um, at least that's the way we've conceptualized it here. Okay, so I'm looking at the time and um, we've, 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 I, I always go way over time. So let's quickly fiddle with this, okay? Um, when you change A, you see um, what's happening here, right? This is, this is also stretching and dilating, but it's stretching and dilating up and down. So as an example, if I pick the nice convenient value like say 3, you can see my previous y-intercept there was uh, y equals negative 1 and it's been stretched out vertically so now it's y equals negative 3 and you can pick out any other point and notice that same kind of I've moved three times further away relationship. So I'm just going to quickly uh, draw these onto here. So I'm getting a parabola that's been moved downward, like I said. Zoop. Not my best work, but I'm just going to keep moving just for the sake of time. And then you can see what I've got here is this vertical stretch. So it's going to look something like this. There are these points that stay the same. Whoopsie daisy. But it's the, uh, it's the x intercepts these times because they're right on the x axis. They haven't moved up or down. Okay, they're at y equals zero as it were. All right, so this is the one that I've gotten. I kind of run out, ran out of time to um, do the rest of the details. So let me actually do that now since we're, we're looking at it, okay? What have I got here? Well, um, remember, our original graph uh, over here, y plus 1 equals x squared. I put that in blue. So let me put a bit more detail on there now. I um, can work out if I do um, a bit of rearrangement algebraically, I can very quickly show myself where all the intercepts are. Um, so for example, if I put over if I subtract one from both sides and write this as x squared minus one, I can do a little factorization here using difference of squares. And that tells me my positive and negative x intercepts. So that'll be negative, oh sorry, that'll be positive one rather. And that one over there will be negative one. Um, at the same time, I can work out my y intercept, which is gonna be negative one. I knew that from the outset because I started at the origin and then I translated downwards one unit. So that's what the blue graph looks like. And the green graph has everything that the blue graph has, but it's been stretched out vertically um, by a factor of A, because I'm, I'm doing this as the general case here, right? So if my intercept used to be negative one, um, my, sorry, my y-intercept, I should say, if my y-intercept used to be negative one, well, my y-intercept will now be negative A. It's A times further away. And any spot that you pick, for example, uh, let's pick a spot like here. Um, actually, I'll go over a little more um, so that I can actually go to x equals 2. Um, if I put in x equals 2 into the original graph, the blue one, right? I'm going to get y plus 1 equals uh, 2 squared. There's me substituting in x equals 2. So y plus 1 equals 4. So y is going to be equal to 3. So I would say, oh, that's 2 comma Three. So now if I were to search for where the equivalent point was on the green graph, I would know that if I put in the same x value, I'll get a y value, but it'll be a times further away. So that would be all the way up here, somewhere up, up in this spot up here, it would be 2 comma 3a. So just like um, this y-intercept is a times further away, um, this coordinate here, and in fact every single coordinate, is a times further away in a vertical direction. And it's vertical because of course we're actually fiddling with the y, which is a, a vertical variable. Okay.